Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm your host, Diane Gibbs. This is the last Design Recharge for 2017, and I'm gonna really work on a better intro for 2018. But really, Design Recharge is made for freelancers and in-house people mainly, is who we end up, uh, I think that is who is our in our community, and we have a community where we meet every Wednesday at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. and these are people who are running a side business or running a business and we just need some tips on building something and making something and seeing where we struggle and it's kind of letting us be, have successes with each other and sharing our successes. So today I'm really excited to have my friend Kim Pinella on. Kim did this piece right here and it's chalk. And so I'm super excited to have her on. She's a really good friend. We actually do a every Tuesday it was every other Tuesday and then we just talked too long so it's every Tuesday and then we're also part of a mastermind group so I've really gotten to know Kim I met her at Creative South we had dinner with our friend Arlene and then it would just hit it off from there and we geek out all the time so I'm excited <laughs> to have my friend who really inspires me so Kim Pinella is an illustrator she's a letterer she's a designer she does things you wouldn't even think she does, but just uh, amazing. She's not just chalk. And so that is one of the things she's going to show us and talk to us about today. So Kim, thanks for coming. Well, thank you for having me. And thank you so much for everybody um, tuning in. Yay. So we love to make sure everybody gets seen over here. So if you have the chat open, feel free to tell us where you're coming in from. Will is in New Jersey. So crew, um, He's friend from Design Recharge, and we're in a Bible study together. So there's just a ton of people, and I'm super thankful for this community as well. So Crew's in Dallas. I always say he's in Houston, but he's not. I just think it's all over Texas. But anyway, so I'm excited. Feel free to put in where you're where you're coming in from, um, and we're just gonna get started. So Kim, we've gotten to get we've gotten to know each other a lot better. And you have a really interesting story that of how you came into design, and it's not necessarily typical, I think. Um, but what led you into design specifically? Well, I've always loved to create, and as a kid, I was very, very creative. And so when it came time to go to school, um, I, I actually, there were, really weren't any art schools that were close by to where I grew up. and Which um, was in Kentucky? Virginia. Virginia. Mm -hmm. Kentucky. I was actually born in um, a really small town, Mount Airy, North Carolina. I know there's some people that are uh, tuned in today from North Carolina. So I'm a Tar Heel. I was born in North Carolina, but I was raised. <laughs> we're not going to be able to be friends anymore because my sister would be <laughs> But I was raised in Virginia, right across the, the, the state line. And Andy Griffith, that's where Andy Griffith is. Yeah. Time. And um, so what I ended up doing was I ended up going to school for drafting because it was pretty much the only thing that um, they taught at the school that was close by to me that I could hold a pencil. So I went to school for that, and when I got out of school, I actually worked in the industry for several years, and I quickly drafting realized... Drafting industry, right? I'm sorry? In the drafting industry, right? Yeah, I did. I actually, um, I don't know if you knew this, I am, but I actually worked in a machine shop for, oh my goodness, I think a couple of years I worked there, and um, we made rotary dies that cut out stickers, and... Um, uh, roll over uh, paper to make uh, milk cartons and stuff like that. So it was a rotary die company and we had to digitize and do all of the designs that they see and uh, milled onto the die. So I worked there and then I got married and I moved away and then I started working for an engineering firm and um, I worked there for, I want to say three or four years. And I just realized that, I really didn't like working in that <laughs> in that field. It was just, I really couldn't be as creative as I wanted to. And so I decided that I wanted to make the move and come into the design world. So, but one of the things from that, I think that, I mean, you're an amazing illustrator, but your attention to detail is so high. 
um, and you actually work really fast. I don't know if that's why, like when you tell me how long that illustration behind you took and when you tell them how long it took, they will be, I think, amazed that you did this this quickly. Um, but there are times when you've done a really big piece and it's a, you know, it really detailed and you say it took me eight hours and that's where I, it's Fabio's here and I always, he works really fast <laughs> too. And that was one of my hashtags, fast is Fabio. And, <laughs> I um, saw that. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think it's really impressive. I don't think you realize how fast you work, but I think you also get in that zone and you, um, I do. And then my body hurts the next day. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially when you're doing something big like that mural behind you. Mm -hmm. The mural work, a lot of times it's um, up and down on the step stool. There's lots of sitting on the floor, crawling around. And this actually, this piece took me, I want to say, mm, it was a little over eight hours. And it was constant, nonstop. I just got in the zone and I, I couldn't stop. I mean, it was just, I got to get this done. And um and now I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it and I'm th seeing things that I, I wish I could add to it. <laughs> so it's never done. But the thing that you guys don't know is, is that when I would actually um, video chat with Diane, what I see on my screen is in reverse. So what I did was I, I literally did all of the lettering that you see there in reverse so that you guys could see it okay. And I was so excited. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to show Diane tomorrow, you know, the mural and everything. And then we connect and, and she was like, oh, it looks really good, but it's backwards. <laughs> I'm like, what? So I actually had to erase all the lettering back there and, I, and redo it so that you guys could actually see it on your end. I don't know. I, so I might not have taken as long. Um, but uh, she did the whole lettering. So she, you projected. Now, not the illustrations. You did all that by hand and the frame you did by hand, but all yes. the lettering, you, you had done that by hand on paper. And mm -hmm. we're going to get into your process because I really think your process is pretty interesting. But you projected it so you would be able to see. And it's a black ch a wall that you'd use chalkboard um, paint. And you'll do some illustrations for clients on this wall, right? Yes. Um, I have another large chalkboard in the house that I use. The lighting is a little bit different there. Um, and that's the wall that I did the cover for the Orlando magazine on. And so, and I've also done some work in here for clients as well. And then I'll photograph it and uh, send it, the file off to them and then they can use it however that they want. So, uh, Yuli, I think, or Yul, I don't know how to say your name, but I think it's Yuli, maybe. We're going to call you Yuli today. You're also from Canada, so I'm glad you're coming in. Um, says, how do you convey to the clients the time and effort that these pieces take? I think that's a great question. I'm sorry, Diane. I... How, how do you convey to clients the time and effort that these pieces take? Well, it can be kind of difficult to, um, to get them to buy in sometimes, I feel, because they just don't realize how much time and energy goes into something like this. And then even with the work that I do, just my pencil and pen sketches, um, it takes a lot of, I, I'll show you guys the process here in a minute, but I redraw a lot and nothing ever comes out on the first try ever. Um, but I just explain to them that everything is hand illustrated and lettered meaning that my hands touch every single thing that leaves my desk. And um, a lot of times once they see that and then they take a look at my portfolio and they see the work that I have on my website, then it's a little easier to, to pull them in. But at first glance, you know, it's just like with anything, it's kind of hard to explain to someone um, how much love that you pour into a piece. Um, until they actually get an idea about the process. And so a lot of times it's just hopping on a call with them. Right. Cause it does take, um, I think what you show the client is really pretty detailed actually. So what drew you to lettering? Cause I think you, you went into drafting thinking, Oh, I'm pretty good at writing. I always had good, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, good marks in school on your mm -hmm. handwriting. So when you were in drafting school, your teacher wasn't always on that same 
No. I remember um, always um, striving to get that A on the report card because when I was in elementary school, um, you got graded on your penmanship. And I remember that was always the one thing that I looked for. I could have cared less about anything else, but if I got the A on my penmanship, then I was good. So um, when I actually got um, to school, when I went to college and everything, I remember thinking that, oh my goodness, I've so got this with, you know, the lettering and everything <laughs> on, my, on my drafting. And the teacher was like, mm -mm, no, you need to be a little more, you know, consistent with your work. And um, so I really had to take a step back and look, you know, re-examine my work and stuff. And, but I've always loved lettering. And um, even as a kid, I remember that, let's see, what was it called? The Weekly Readers. And then they had the yes. little plastic um, where that you could order your books and stuff at school. And I remember my girlfriend, she got this cool lettering book. And I was just dying to get it. And she let me borrow it. And I took it home, and I remember uh, tracing the fonts that were in it. And um, there was no way that I could get it because it was one of those things you had to order five books in order to get it. My mom's like, there's no way I'm ordering five books just so you can get this book. But I did find it online not too long ago, and I bought it. So <laughs> now I have it. Now you have I it. Think, I think it was something that started early on for me. I've just always loved um script and hand lettering and just doodling. My dad always drew bubble letters hmm. and I always thought that was so cool. So I think it just was natural. And then with chalk, I've always loved chalk. That was always um, the thing that the teacher had to keep me away from was the chalkboard and keep the chalk corralled somewhere else because Kim was the one that if she got a piece of chalk, she was doodling on the chalkboard. So it only makes sense that, you know, 30, 40 years later, that I'm, you know, drawing on the wall with chalk, so. All right, so what do you love about chalk? Because I think, because to be honest, Kim, I can't stand to feel it in my hands. You know, it makes me sad when I hear someone <laughs> say that. <laughs> and my daughter, um, my youngest daughter is very artistic and she can't stand chalk. And it just makes me so sad because I, but she does other things and we, you know, draw together. But the thing that I love so much about chalk is, is that I feel like that it is so forgiving and it's just so easy to come back from a mistake. And that's how I feel about it. But then through teaching workshops, I found that a lot of people see it the other way. They think that it would be too hard to work with. So I think that, you know, just, playing around with it and just experimenting, everyone finds different tools that they'll use. So I think it's a, it's a texture thing and I like pastels, but I don't, I don't know if it's just it being on the chalkboard, but you have a tip for that. So you showed me, you had done these, you do these workshops and you were doing these Mr. And Mrs. Um, signs. Do you mm. have that reachable? I do. And so you, um, so you, he, she cut these out with the saw. Well, my husband did. <laughs> okay. You had your people. Uh, That's right. <laughs> and um, so, but you paint them on with the chalk paint. And mm -hmm. I've used chalk paint before. And it is, there is an issue, unless you really sand it down, there's an issue that it, it'll get the brush strokes. I mean, there's things. But because you've been doing this for so long, you have this, you showed me this tool, this I don't know, product. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I can show you guys. And um, what it is, well, first of all, let me just say this. I am forever, I don't even realize I'm doing it, but if I go to Lowe's or Home Depot, I am constantly in the back of my head thinking, how can I use this with my chalk work, my design work? I mean, it's crazy the amount of things that I've actually purchased from Lowe's or taken from my husband's garage. He's constantly having to come in here and get his drill. But I remember I was on a home improvement site and there was a girl on there talking about how that um, she used this product to um, prevent brush strokes from showing up when she was painting furniture. And so I have found that this stuff works great and I will just use a paper plate and I'll put some of my um, uh, chalk paint on the paper plate and then I'll just mix some of this in. And it becomes really thin 
and I don't use a roller and I don't use a, a brush anymore, but I do use this and I'll use the foam brushes. Those seem to work the best. And it really will give you a nice smooth chalkboard. So it's, I think it's called Floetrol and um, it says on here, it eliminates brush and roller marks. So did you use that when you painted your wall? No, um, I did not. But I actually had a guy come in and resurface the wall because we have what, um, what they call, I guess, orange peel texture. So I had them strip all that down. So I had a pretty smooth wall, but I did roll this one. Can you show them the Mr. and Mrs. close up so that they can see yeah. what that, because I think that is, for me, it is really smooth looking. Yeah, you can really see it like that. Like, to me, that would be very helpful to have such a smooth, smooth surface. So it is, it's really, it's really nice. And I mean, I've made a bunch of mistakes and I've learned a lot along the way. And so if I can share a little tip like this and give somebody, um, you know, some help to, to get better chalkboards, then Is that on it. your tools page? I do not have that on my tools page. Okay. Okay. So I, so I already shared your tools page, but I want to make sure people know who are listening on iTunes or whatever on YouTube too. Um, it's Kim Pinella, K-I-M-P-A-N-E-L-L-A.com slash tools slash well, slash tools with an S. And then that will get you a bunch of other things. The flow trawl, you get it just at Home Depot or Lowe's, right? Home Improvement. Yes, I got it at Lowe's. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, Yuli asked another question, which I thought was great. Uh, oh, no, Maria. Well, oh, no, it's Yuli. I wonder if Kim uses a chalk holder. So can you tell him how you sharpen your chalk? Because one... Um, <laughs> you get some really, really details, especially in the lettering piece that's behind. Mm -hmm. On something like this, I, on a scale like this, I don't normally sharpen my chalk because it's so big. Really? But um, on a smaller chalkboard, like the Mr. and Mrs. that I just showed you, um, I purchased a double barrel, and this is actually up on my tools. Not this particular one, but I have a double barrel that has um, the smaller piece for the pen, the smaller hole for the pencil, and then the bigger one will actually hold like the, the beginner, the kindergarten pencil. size pencil. Yeah. And it's perfect for chalk. And um, it's a great way to sharpen it and get the, a nice fine point so that when you are working on a smaller chalkboard um, like this scale, then you can get those nice details. So then another tip you had told me about was you use your drill and you shared this, I think on Instagram. So yes. you commandeered your husband's drill, mm -hmm. put your chalk in it. You hold the little sharpener, the double barrel one. Yeah. And then you, and then I just pull the trigger and sharpen it. And what happened was, um, a certain, there's a certain type of chalk It's called anti-dust and it's by Crayola and it's really, really dense. And so when you're trying to sharpen that kind of, that chalk, it takes a lot of effort. Your wrist gets tired. And I was sharpening a lot of chalk because I was getting ready to do a workshop. And so I was just thinking, what can I do to make this easier? And I went out and I got my husband's DeWalt and I just put the chalk in there and just, and it, it's, it's actually a funny video. I mean, everyone was cracking up about it, but it was practical and it helped me actually um, get all the chalk sharpened. And so something else that I've learned, and I always sh share this in my workshops, is that, you know, a dirty chalkboard is um, your best friend because I, the way I explain it is it's, it's like um, in Photoshop where that you have different layers. Well, when you have a dirty chalkboard with dust on it, just rubbing your finger across it, taking an eraser across it, um, it, it reveals a darker, um, a darker light, I don't know gradient I guess and so you can get your shadows and it just really gives you a lot of variation and um, so what I do is when I sharpen my chalk let me show you what I do I actually keep my chalk dust and, and that's a so, super tip right <laughs> so I don't throw it away and so you know a lot of times they'll tell you to take a piece of chalk and rub it over the chalkboard to season it and i found that a lot of times your chalk can sometimes have little granules and it. it'll scratch your chalkboard all to pieces 
So this works great because then you just sprinkle it on like salt and then you take your hands and rub over it and you've instantly seasoned your chalkboard and now you have a nice chalkboard you can start drawing on and then you can pull chalk off of it to get those nice um, 3D effects, the shadows and everything. So that's another, another good tip, you know, don't throw your chalk dust away if you do sharpen your, your chalk. Right, all right, so Yuli wants to know if you wet your chalk. I don't, and I have actually seen that some people do wet their chalk to keep it from being so dusty, but I've, I've never done that. You really embrace the dust. I do, and so does my dog. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a black dog, so he yeah. ends up <laughs> Now Jackson's starting to snore. Um, oh. Clearly, we are not exciting enough for him. So um, can you walk us through the process for one of your chalk pieces? And I love the frame ones. Um, I think your frame, sir. So we talked about yesterday, because we meet on Tuesdays, um, why this piece behind you had to have a more simple frame. Yes. You were telling your daughter, because she was like, oh, no, you need more. And you were like, no, no, I can't have more, because there was too much going on. But a lot of times, it's a, you have a kind of blank background, so you have this really, there's one with uh, Never Forget the Arts, Mm -hmm. um, that piece. Oh, did you want me to go over that? Yeah, you want to show? Yeah, show us that one. Okay. So let me share the screen. Anytime, Yuli. She said thanks. All right. So this is what I love. This is also process. So we see that you're you like us, it? normal people. Yeah, we can see that. I can't see it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Huh. Oh, here we go. Let me click on it. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Diane. I'm a no. newbie. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So that you're just like us and you just kind of write it out first. But mm -hmm. man, from this, this is as good as I could do. And then it goes to the next page. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I was told to just forget a career in the arts uh -huh. and um, that I was kind of playing around. I'm sorry. What a waste that would have been. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't listen. I am too. So um, I was just kind of playing around with this idea. I was just writing down some of my thoughts, and this was one of them that I wrote down. And then when you turn the page, the very next page is I kind of took what I had wrote down on that first um, page in my, in my journal and then the next page, I said, you know what, I want to, I think I want to do something that says never forget the arts ever. And that's where that this sketch came to be. It started out as a pencil sketch. And then a lot of times I will, I'll take a pencil sketch and then I'll roll into a chalk piece with it. And so this is, if you follow me on Instagram, this is the piece that you saw on Instagram. And then I took it a step further and did it on the, the chalk wall back there and put a nice ornate frame around it. And that was up for a while. It's just so, hmm? Go ahead. no, I was just going to say it's, it's just nice to be able to come into the office and have uplift, uplifting words on the chalkboard. For sure. But that's where seasoning that chalkboard, instead of starting with it totally um, clean that really gives you those, those dark darks, that full black, where it really gives it a lot of depth. But to oh, me, yeah. you know, first step, second step, and then bam, you're on the wall. So does your mind just think automatically it's able to switch from black to white? Like you don't, cause that would be an issue for me of, do you know what I mean? Like, like what do, you, what do I want to do white and what yeah. do I want? Mm. It must just automatically for you. Man, your lettering is so killer. How you did that G with the T, like the G and forget, and how it's also the oh. <laughs> man, that was awesome. Thank you. You know what? Um, I actually was watching Dan, and Danny? yes, and I love his work, and I love how that he ties his words together. Mm. And I was thinking, you know, I really want to practice that because I really love how that that looks. And this was one of the pieces where I was really trying to incorporate just pulling my words together. And um, so, yeah. I love it. <laughs> so um, what are the pros and cons of working with chalk? Because sometimes 
Can, do you have the um, piece that's the with in color? The um, Clea said that's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Said, it must be sad when it comes time to erase a piece and clean the chalkboard. Just think yesterday when she had to erase it and then start over with that <laughs> that old lettering well, piece because I thought it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't so bad having to erase that yesterday because I because I was actually excited. I knew then when I walked into my office I would be able to read it because before <laughs> when I would walk in it was all oh, you know, backwards. <laughs> But I did have that happen, the, the dog roses, the wallpaper that I did that you had shared um, on Design Recharge, that one, I did that wall and I fell in love with it. I just loved it. And then two days after it was up, I got the job to do the Orlando Magazine and I only had that one chalkboard in the house at the time. And that hurt, having to erase, <laughs> erase yeah. it. But I said, you know what, that's okay, because I'll do another floral wallpaper soon, and, and then this is when this went up, so. So I have a question. When you're erasing, do you just erase it, or will you totally go black with, like, water and a rag? I've only done that, like, once or twice on this you board. You leave it seasoned, right? Yep, I normally do. Okay. I'll just leave it seasoned, and um, I'll just use the dusting mitt that I was showing you the other day. Do you have that? You want to show them? Yeah, I do. Cause I, w I asked about that. I was like, can you imagine like a little black eraser that you had at school? <laughs> that would take freaking forever. It would. And this thing is great. I don't know if you guys have seen these, but I came across this. I, I didn't buy it to use it in here. I bought it to clean my house, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's being used here. And it's just one of those uh, mitts where you can see it says dust and then polish. And it's just awesome. I mean, it really takes the chalk right off. And then when this gets dirty, you can flip it the other way. And you've got a fresh one over here on both sides. And then you can just toss it into the washing machine and it cleans right up. So this is perfect. I love using this to clean off my chalkboard. So, okay, Clea asked one of the same questions that I've asked you, and Karina asked you. Oh, okay. So you have an outline or a planning stage between the first and second picture here, but you don't. You just jump, right? Well, on this particular one, this was a freak of nature, y'all. This was <laughs> a freak of nature. Like I told Diane, <laughs> there really wasn't any in-betweens on this one. I just kind of started playing around with the for, never forget the arts ever. And that just kind of came to be, it started out for um, never forget the arts. And then I was like, Oh, it looks off balance. And I was like, okay, never forget the arts ever because you don't ever, ever want to forget right. that part of yourself. Um, but this was a, this was a fluke. Um, but I'm going to show you guys one. Do you want me to show, the show one it one? now? Yeah. Okay. Show it now. I'm going to show you so that you guys are going to see exactly what, how that it comes together. So let me, I don't know if you can see this, but this oh, is. Can you make us, can you stop screen sharing and then go bigger so that we can see that better? Okay, now. Okay, so I'm going to kind of walk you guys through and show you how that this came to be. And um, I was just playing around with, I came up with this quote, I was playing around with, you know, how I wanted it to, to sound and what I wanted to say, because um, I really do feel everyone has a creative talent, everyone can draw, I've never met a kid that couldn't draw. Right. And so it just came up with the, you know, no pencil possesses magic, the magic lives deep within the soul of those who possess it, or those who wield it. And um, so the first thing that I knew that I wanted this piece to have a hand in the center of it holding a pencil. And I'm going to show you because this is, this will make more sense. <laughs> so this was my, can you guys all see that? Yes. Okay. This was my first attempt at drawing the hand. And I, I, I'm a little bit embarrassed, but I giggle every time I look at this thing. <laughs> I literally thought I'm just going to give up right here because it's just not going to happen. But that's another thing you can't give up. You really have to keep pushing. And um, so I moved on to let's try this again. 
And so this was the second sketch. And I'm starting to feel a little bit better about my skills. I'm like, okay, I think I can do this. And then the third one came along and this was my courage. This was my courage piece because this right here, I was like, okay, I got this. I can draw a hand. It's going to look okay. And then I invested in working on the lettering, how I wanted was, it to come together. Was that the first attempt on lettering right there? This is the first attempt. That's pretty and impressive. as you can see, the, I wasn't really planning it out too well. And my, <laughs> I ran out of paper people. Right. So then I had to get um, a bigger piece of paper because, you know, we don't draw smaller. And um, so <laughs> here was the, the next attempt. I'm still trying to work it out, figure out how I want it to, to look. And, and then, what time, like time frame? Like, is this a pretty quick? thing how long are each of these taking you and you're using your light table right yes I am okay and I'll show you the light table this okay. piece from start to finish took me a day just kind of off and on playing with you know redrawing it and um, so Karina asked do you do a lot of erasing it and fixing as you go or does that just or does it just come out like that well, you can see here where that I was doing some erasing. But pretty much, Karina, it comes out like that. But she's done a lot of practicing on lettering. And she even showed me something that was an early lettering piece. And I was like, oh, my gosh, then there's hope. Oh, the fall one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, I mean, it just is. Well, I mean, I think Karina's super talented. Holy cow. I mean, her Instagram, she's blowing it up with all these pretty lettering pieces. Your stuff is really, but really it's also good. just consistency and you've been practicing, right? And, but right now, because you've drawn so much, you know how the letters go and you know what, where you could push and pull and where you can kind of push them. But it, just like you were working on the Dan Lee kind of technique, mm -hmm. it was just something you had to work on, right? Yeah. You just got to try different things and, um, you just, you know, when you see something you like, you know, give it a try and see, you know, hey, it might be fun. And just that's how that you develop your style and how that you figure out what you're comfortable with. And I've discovered that I'm very comfortable with script. I love it. And I, I like incorporating script and um, a serif font together. But, um, and so then you're just redrawing on top. This is part of your process. This is what you yeah. do. You'll mm -hmm. draw on top and then reform, recompose as you go. So then the next step is, well, this, this is the one where that I decided, you know what, I'm getting kind of close to what, uh, where I want to be with this. So I'm going to do it in pen this time. So I kind of came across this with pen. And just then, a new sheet of paper and pen with the light table, right? New sheet of paper, yes. And so, then from this, sorry, this, no, what now? Clea asked, I don't know if you've answered this already, but um, how long have you been doing hand lettering? I would say, gosh, I don't know. Like, when maybe, was that fall one? That was that fall one, I think, was in 2013. So maybe about 2013 forward, mm -hmm. right? I was playing around with um, lettering before then, but that was one piece where I was like, oh, this is so good. You know, I got to share this. <laughs> but um, it, I really didn't have anything that I was super proud to share. And I really wasn't working on pieces like this. It was just, you know, doodling my name and, and different things like that. And then, you know, practicing the alphabet too. But um, Brian says sweet piece. Oh, thank you. So thank then you're, you do it in your pen, right? This is in pen, and then you're just adding some shadowing with? With pencil. pencil. Mm -hmm. I really love using the, um, the pen and then coming back in with the pencil and adding the shading. So what's that bag? Um, that is, um, we use this a lot in drafting, and it's super cool. I don't know if any of you guys have ever used one, but it's called, a, I call it a pillow eraser. 
Um, but it's a dry erasing, um, a dry cleaning bag, I think is what they call it. But it's a little bag and it has eraser crumbs in it. And you can take it and rub it across your artwork and it will take up all of the, the pencil. It's really sweet. And then something else that I use it for is if you have a bag that you carry all your pencils and stuff in, you know how sometimes they'll get graphite all over yeah. it? You can take that and just rub your pencil, rub it around your pencil and it completely will clean it off. It's great. It's awesome. I, I keep that uh, handy at all times. So Doc said he also used it in drafting class to keep from smudging drawings. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yep, because you can actually put the, um, you can sprinkle it over, and then it will keep you from smudging. So, Brian, she has a link on her tools page. I'm going to go ahead and put her link back in again. So, she has all, like, any tools that we've talked about, minus the Florian thing from Lowe's, um, it's, it's there. And so, you can click on that and then get that bag. It's no worries, buddy. We're just glad you're here. All <laughs> right. So, um so is there anything else on that one that no mm -mm. Um, my desk i was going to show you guys my husband um let me go stop share so he builds he's a contractor and does he's he needs his drill. He doesn't want you to keep his drill all the time, but he did make your desk for you, right? Yeah, my husband is, um, he's a computer geek. He's a, um, he's a systems engineer, but he does do some woodworking. And so I asked him to build me a desk. And so this is my little workstation that he built me. And I use a light table a lot, but I didn't want to purchase one that I was constantly having to pull it out and then find somewhere to store it. So I asked him if he could make a light table in my desk for me. And he was like, sure. And he did. So this is what the top of it looks like. And I normally have a larger, um, um, I can put one of the really big desk calendars and it'll completely cover it up and you would never know it's there. And then when I uh, want to use it, I just take the calendar off and there's a switch underneath the desk and it lights up and I, I use this thing all the time. I absolutely love it. So he was that sweet enough to do that really for me. Clean. <laughs> it's really clean. I clean today <laughs> just for you. <laughs> so they're saying, wow, awesome, amazing. I think, man, he could put up some uh, schematics and, and <laughs> sell some uh, how to. So I had, uh, Brian said he had a glass desk and he hooked a light under it. He says he misses that thing. So it is really yeah. nice for the, how you work in that process mm -hmm. i use a lot of tracing paper so this just makes it easier are, what kind of paper are you using what kind of pencils what do you, I, in? Do, okay i use the cheapest Can paper you go to the, stop screen share again oh yeah i'm sorry it's okay you're just tiny i keep forgetting <laughs> I use the cheapest paper that you can buy. I go to Walmart and I buy a ream of copy paper and I have it sitting here next to me and I'll grab a piece and I'll sketch and um, I always have it handy. And that kind of started when uh, my desk was in another room. I had my printer sitting next to me and I just really didn't like how that my hand would feel in some sketchbooks because I just wouldn't lay flat and sometimes right. you want to turn your paper and so I would start stealing from my printer and now <laughs> it's become the thing that I do and um, actually Diane and I were talking earlier this week that I need to start binding my sketches together into um, my own sketchbooks after I get my pieces together. Hibba's here and she says she loves your wall. Oh thank you. All right, so, but you don't just work in chalk. So clients get you to work in all kinds of mediums. You did this cute, cute little RV thing with colored pencils, so you do. But you have a particular pen that you've turned me on to that I also really like. Can you just kind of tell that story about the Pilot G? And this is also on her tools page, so if you want to pick up some, they're really good. Okay. Okay, so, I, um, I actually was in Sam Flax here in Orlando, our, our, our art store. And I always head to the pen section to test out new pens and stuff, you know, and, um, I tried out this pen. I picked it up. It's the pilot G tech C three. 
And when I picked it up, and I... it's a 0.28, right? Or a point. I think, um, I don't know. It's don't, tiny. It's, it's small. It's super tiny. It really is. I don't know if you guys... Yuli also says it's the best pen in the world. Oh, really? See? Yes. I'm telling you right now, this this pen, I had heard people talk about, oh, this pen, I can't live without this pen. And I'm thinking, wow, really? You know, I just use whatever I grab a hold of. Well, then when I came across this pen, and I, I'm not paid by Pilot, by the way, I'm, I'm, this is just truly how that I felt. But when I tested this thing out, I was like, man, that, it's almost like a pencil. I thought it was a pencil. And then I walked around the art store a little bit and I came back. I said, I got to draw with that pen again. And um, I tested it out again and I, I literally had to buy some that day. And I have bought boxes of them now off of Amazon. And normally when I teach, I have in my workshops, I've actually given these away before in some of my lettering classes, but it is super fine. It's a great way to do detail. And I just love sketching with the pen, with mm -hmm. this particular pen. So then, so recently you had done a piece. I don't know if you have that. Can you share that one? Um, that's, oh, okay, yeah. It's the quote that's actually up on the wall back there. Oh, right. Um, but this, 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 this piece right here. So, but that, you didn't work at that size. You worked on a regular eight and a half by 11, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you just scan it in and you printed it out bigger. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. and so, yes, I did. So you also sell prints. You have a thing on your your um, website, kimpanella.com, where you can buy these. There's some like the print I have back there, the black and white one. But then there's also prints like you just have right there. And sometimes, um, a lot of times you'll work at that smaller size and then you just blow it. You scan it in at a higher resolution and then you print it out. Right. Mm -hmm. But with pilot, with that thing, you love this pen so much you tagged pilot. So you had been, mm -hmm. you had tagged them before or done a hashtag or you'd done at pilot, but then you figured out a way. I always like to share any tips we can, especially on things that we're, we really love. Um, can you, can you tell them what you did? Yeah, what I started doing was um, I thought, you know, whenever I find something that I really like, I'm going to put what I drew it with or what paper I used so that other people could discover great tools. And so I started putting it in the comments, you know, created with my GTEC C3. And um, then one day I decided, you know what, let me just tag pilot. I'll just go in and tag them on the image. So I tagged them on the image of that piece that I just showed you. And I guess it was probably like 30 minutes later, I got a message and they said, Hey, we love your work. And we were wondering if we could feature this on our feed. And I was like, I would love for you to. And so that's how it just kind of opened up a conversation with pilot and they ended up sharing, um, featuring that piece on their site. But it was a while later, right? So you, so one, it was, you hadn't really gotten a lot of feedback just from tagging, like hitting the at symbol and doing, and I think it's, you know, depending on the size of the company, if it's a person like mm -hmm. me, if somebody hits at design recharge, I'm going to look at it and see. But if you actually go in and tag it, it's mm -hmm. shown at, Will did this one time, I was wearing one of his t-shirts and he, he tagged me in the photo like pip you know it's it's extra step you have to take mm -hmm. but I, you i just want to share this that that was actually something that really worked for you and maybe mm -hmm. it'll work for everybody worked for will i mean i know will so it doesn't really matter i'm not that incredible but um but you know i think that it does depend pilot's a big company mm -hmm. and so then what happened because really you they contacted they said yes we won't want to do this that you had given them permission, but then it was weeks, maybe went by. And it was like, um, like a week and a half to two weeks. They said that they wanted to share it on their, on their, um, Instagram feed. And I went and I checked and I was like, wow. I said, you know, they never, they never shared that piece. So I know how it can be for me too. Sometimes comments get pushed down and you miss it. So I went back into, my Instagram feed where that we had that conversation and I just liked, I unliked and then re-liked their comment to me saying, we'd like to use your piece. 
and within like 20 minutes they posted it up so sometimes it's about not giving up and not being like oh my stuff just sucks and i'm not on their radar they decided you know they because i think that's what our inner voice says and i think you even probably said that oh, to yeah. yourself, right mm -hmm. but it wasn't yeah. that it was just everybody's busy and you i thought that was also another good tip not just tagging them but also going back in and re-liking that um or unliking unloving and then re-loving that uh yeah. that comment it's almost like poking but for yeah. instagram <laughs> yeah yeah kind of with love though right yes with love all right so <laughs> we got like um Four questions done okay so we have like 15 minutes left so I want to show a couple other things so it seems to me like your um, love for detail is it would take me forever and I mean weeks months to be able to crank out some of the stuff that you do um, and it seems like like Fabio you're just able to do it pretty quickly and I really like that you start with maybe just the words and then you um, the next step is really putting mm -hmm. them in a composition. So can you kind of walk us through maybe the, this is something Karina asked you in our mastermind group. And she said, um, what do you send an initial, what's the initial sketch look like for a client, right? Karina. And she posts this thing up in the Slack channel and we're like, no, no, the original sketch, like that looks like yeah. a piece. And so sometimes you have had a good long relationship with people and you know what they're going to want. So mm -hmm. can you kind of go through that craft beer best? Did you pull that up as things to share? Mm. No. Okay. Then don't I worry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but I normally what I do is, is I will, um, I'll just do a rough sketch and kind of lay the ideas out. And um, I, sh I think I shared with you guys the, the post that I have on my website for the craft beer fest where it has the, the, no, it was for the, um, Orlando magazine because they wanted two different covers. And that was a good example of, of a rough sketch for me, but guys, seriously, you know, I didn't go to design school. And so I was just, I'm just working the way that I feel is the best way. But it's amazing. We're oh, yeah. not saying it's, it's, it's great. It's amazing, Kim. Like it's a, a lot of detail and you're really doing a lot of the design already. You're Thank figuring, you. and I wish my students would do that. I wish I would do that because I think it solves it. You solve the problem, you know, right then instead of going through, but you also do different renditions. Like there are things that I've seen you work on where, you're like, oh, I don't really like this here. I'm going to move this. I'm going to change this. And I think it's good for people to know that things adjust. But you just, instead of putting in the computer, now you do work in the computer. You do mm -hmm. some stuff in Photoshop completely um, based off of a paper sketch. But mm -hmm. And I think it's good. But you really prefer to just do paper on top of paper in that sort of light table. I really love how that a sketch looks to me. A, I, that's just something that I just love. And I really, I live in the blacks and the whites and all of the shade. I just love that color for me. I love color. I love it. It can be a little scary for me adding it to some of my work, but I just, there's just something about working in black and white for me. I just, it just is so classic looking and, it just is where I feel comfortable, but I am starting to venture out a little bit and try color. Um, but one stepping back to the rough sketches, one of the reasons why I started doing that is because that's the easiest way for me to get what's up here out mm -hmm. onto a piece of paper. And sometimes it looks great up here, but then when you get it out on a piece of paper, you're like, Oh no, that just does not look good <laughs> at all. And it's also a quick and easy way for you to share an idea with a client without putting a ton of time into it. Yeah. So that was another reason why that I would always come with a rough sketch. And then, you know, sometimes you have to see what someone else is doing in order to have the courage to do it yourself. Right. So it wasn't like that. I just said, you know, I'm just going to roll in here with this pencil sketch and I'm going to lay it on the table and that's what we're going to roll with. I mean, I saw that Dana Tanamachi was using sketches like that, um, especially like with her, um, 
her Tommy Hilfiger that she did that that artwork was just such a loose sketch and I and I thought you know what if she's using this because I I had never been to design school I didn't know what was right what's wrong and so I was just going with what felt comfortable and what I was seeing other people doing and um, that's kind of become how that I work too it's just easier for me to it's quick and it's easy and my clients seem to be able to get a pretty good idea of where I'm going to go with it. So you don't like one of the Windermere craft beer festival, you guys can check it out on her um, uh, Instagram or her website. Um, and her Instagram is just Kim Pinella. I'm going to put these up here real quick, but like you also use colored chalk. So it's not like you're just mm -hmm. doing, um, and you also do colored pencil. You'll, but black and white is really, where your home is and you did a personal piece recently for your anniversary and then you posted it and then ended up um, doing a custom one for mm -hmm. somebody else. Um, I don't know if you have that piece. Did you put that up? I can't remember now. Um, I don't, I don't have that, but I have, um, I actually have it framed here. So again, details and you, you had kind of your grandparents, marriage certificate right yeah mm -hmm. and so it was very detailed very different than what we see today and mm -hmm. I love what you did with that you guys definitely should check it out on Instagram because you can see really some cool details and she did like the two fingerprints in the bottom that make a heart and it's mm -hmm. Yeah, my great grandparent. It was my great great grandparents. Um, their wedding certificate was super ornate. It was really um, large scale. And I remember growing up as a kid and looking at that and thinking, "Golly, when I get married, I want one of, one of those." But then, you know, you get married and you get this printout that you know has the. <laughs> it looks like the paper, you know, the certificate paper that you buy that already has the border on it. Yes. And they just run it through there, and boom, there you go. So this was something that I had wanted to work on for quite some time. And I finally had some free time and I um, made that happen. And then when I posted it up on Instagram, I had somebody local here reach out to me and they wanted to purchase one. And so I do those now too. So if anybody wants a custom wedding certificate, you know, give me a shout and um, I can put your names in it and your special date. And then you can put your thumbprints in the bottom of it. So, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I think, I think it turned out really nice. Thank you. It, it did. It totally turned out amazing. Jackson's not as comfortable now. He's sitting back Aww. up. Aww. Anyway, I know he's very awkwardly sitting in my lap. Um, so we, we've been meeting and we discussed some of the struggles that we have. And to me, you've been a huge blessing. What do you, um, and I think both of us feel like, like this a lot, but I just want to encourage people to also have kind of a, a group, a small group, or just even one person that they can talk to, mm -hmm. um, to be able to ask questions, have a safe place to ask questions where somebody's not going to laugh at you, um, mm -hmm. share struggles and just accountability. Cause that's something you and I do. We'll have like, okay, what are you going to do for next week? Or what are you going to do for two weeks with our mastermind group? Um, what does that do? How has that been for you and why would you encourage somebody else to do something like that? Well, I think that it's awesome because, um, you know, just like you said, it's always good to have somebody um, that you can open up to and you can share your ideas with and they can give you their input and it's in a safe environment. You know that you're not going to be judged, that you're only here to help me get better. And, um, and then we've become really good friends too. And so it's just, it's, it's just awesome. And, you know, I've always heard people say, you know, find your tribe. And, um, you know, if you, if you're at a point in your life and you feel like that you can't, you don't have your tribe, you haven't found your tribe, don't give up because I totally was thinking that, you know, Hey, this is just not going to happen. Is this really possible? I mean, <laughs> how can you find somebody that you can just kind of click with? And, you know, you've, that's what Diane has been for me. You know, she's my friend. I can uh, talk to her about design. We talk about dogs. We talk about fa life, family, everything. And um, I really encourage people to be open and um, share your work. Um, and also share that you're willing, you are looking for, hey, do you want to meet online? And, and now it kind of turned in. And so now 
there's uh, five of us that meet. Mm -hmm. Karina, who's here, she is amazing. As she is. Just, you get um, to see people's superpowers, and I think a small group is really, you know, I know Bob Ewing and Scotty Russell and Dan Lee, and a lot of people that I've interviewed are in that kind of the guys lettering group. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, some it's maybe a little bit bigger, but I think that they really use each other. Um, in a great way and it is a safe place where you can get real feedback and nobody's trying to hurt you or mm -hmm. they're really trying to lift you up. So I would just encourage people. Um, and Will says those mastermind groups sound so interesting. I'd love to put people together. If you're interested or you want to do something like that or find somebody, um, let me know and I'll try to put some stuff together. Uh, so me and you have been scheming and planning. I want to talk. We have three minutes. Okay. All kinds of things that we're going to do for 2018. And maybe, and that's another good thing. You see my dog's nose now. <laughs> um, other things that uh, maybe everybody else is figuring out for what they're going to do and what their goals are for um, 2018. And so mm -hmm. me and you are going, hey, my mom's here. Hey, mom. Um, this is my friend, Kim. Um, anyway, so the, um, love on designers. Yes. So we're going to do this thing and it's going to be, we're going to, we're announcing it now, I guess, but what's going to happen in February and maybe we do something throughout February, but mm -hmm. we're going to do some giveaways. Do you still want to do that today? Two little things. I do. I do. I have some prints that I want to, um, give away to a couple of, lucky people. Okay. So you're going to give me a number between, um, one and oh. for, for right now, one and 18 and I'm okay. going to pick, or I guess you can give me two numbers. Two. Well, the first one is going to be this. It's 18 by 24. Um, uh, it's a silk screen of the have courage and be kind that mama and, sauce did, right? Yep. Printed by mama sauce and it's on French paper. Black licorice. Mm. So this will be the first one. <laughs> Joey says, yes, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> so give you a number. I'm going to say seven. Okay, number seven. And it can't be my mom. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that was my mom. Give me another number. <laughs> um, ten. Joey, you get that, Joey. <laughs> Hey, sweet. She's Hawaii. So, Joey, okay. if you email me your address, we'll send it to you. All right. Perfect. So then, um, what's the next giveaway? Hey, Jeremy, I didn't see you were here. The other one, this one is actually um, printed on engineering paper. And but it is a large... So this is what's back there. Yes. So read, read what it says. So that... Okay. Um, this piece says the purpose of life is to, to discover your gift, the work of life to develop it, and the meaning to give your gift away. And I think this is just such a powerful message, and it doesn't mean that we need to do free work, okay? Mm -hmm. It just means that you share your talents with the world. You show the world what it is that you can do. Anyway, I love this quote. I heard it here on Design Recharge, and it punched me in the gut, and I said, I got to do something with it. But um, I was testing out having prints done at Staples. This was $1.70, people. Not that I'm giving away cheap gifts or anything, but I just thought you might like to know that you can get some large-scale prints of your lettering work at Staples. Yeah. So. Now Jackson's sitting there. Let's go... Um, 17. Okay. So Will, that's you, buddy. So Will, um, send me your, uh, he's like, Oh, Hey, so sweet. All right. So that's two giveaways. And then in the month of February, Kim and I are going to kind of do some special non necessarily on Wednesdays. It's going to start January 31st. And we're going to do a few little things that we've been working on. One of the things both of us have this huge love for cards so we're going to create some card packs. My poor dog. Um, anyway, he had a tick on him. We tried to get it out and got everything but the very end. And so he's like sitting all funny. You should see him. Poor little leg. Anyway. Um, but anyway, so 
we will be doing a few things that we're going to give away through the month, but it's about our love for designers. So it could be like some packs of um, special things, not just prints or things that me and Kim have made, but also some other things. And there, that's one of the goals that I wanted to do is do some more videos that were tips and tools because there are things that I've shown Kim what to do. And she's like, you should share this. And I'm like, yes. oh, really? so some are just tools that I thought everybody knew, but then maybe everybody doesn't know. So we're going to, Kim and I both are, um, <laughs> do it. Amy says my birthday's in February. Just saying, Hey, Amy, <laughs> we're going to take care of you. Um, just make sure I know what the date is and we'll get you something. But anyway, so I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you'll use the rest of December to really think about what you want to do for January and for the next year. I always do this thing called creative jumpstart and it's something that I just love. He's so nervous. He is just shaking. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, he, uh, not he, so there's like, hello, he, there's a window. He's look, he's not just not paying attention to me, but in January, I always do this thing. It's all throughout the months of January and it, it's like a crafty thing. It's not necessarily a design thing, but I really like, I really like doing it. And so I would like to create something like that for y'all. There's all kinds of things that I think, um, I want to know what, you guys are interested in doing or how you want to have your business grow or, or like Kim, just being, it was one of your goals being featured on a product that you use and love just being featured on their Instagram or reaching out to them, you know, or, or having something like that. I think small goals like that are really, um, are really good. Mm -hmm. Kim, you got any goals you want to share? Or did I well, <laughs> Oh, I, there's a lot of things that um, next year I really want to focus on um, doing more speaking. Um, public speaking is not uh, one of my strong suits. Um, I actually was just hypnotized not too long ago to try to help with <laughs> public speaking because, but it is one of those things where that I feel that that fear of public speaking has really held me back in a lot of ways because I just don't get out there and, and network as much as I should. And I'm really trying to overcome that. So that's one of my goals. And I'm starting off my new year today um, by being on the design recharge show. So, mm -hmm. Yay. So that's um, one goal, but see, it wasn't that bad, right? Do what? It wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't. Everybody was super sweet. I just wish that I had more time to talk to everybody so and you really just said you would have never known, Kim. See? Oh, <laughs> thank you. I guess it's just one of those things where that you get in your own head and you feel like everybody else knows what's going through your mind. And um, I've had people tell me in my workshops that they didn't think that I would, that I looked nervous at all, but I was falling apart inside. <laughs> so, but that's just something that I really want to work on. And, um, and uh, something else I wanted to put out there is that, you know, if you guys ever have questions or you ever want to um, just talk or, um, you know, you're working on something and, and you want someone to take a look at it, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I love talking to folks about lettering. I love talking about chalk and murals. So don't be afraid to send me an email and pick my brain. I'll hop so on. How would somebody get in touch with you? So we have... Instagram, Kim Panella, K-I-M-P-A-N-E-L-L-A. -L -L same for Twitter, same for Behance. Mm -hmm. um, if you, can they email you straight from your website? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go to my website, pretty much any way that you want to get in touch with me is listed on my website. And then I'm on Instagram quite a bit. And that's another one of my goals. I want to start posting more regularly. It's a little tough for me sometimes to post regularly, but I need to do that. So, so that's another, one of my another thing people can do to keep in touch with you is sub they can subscribe to your newsletter mm -hmm. and I'm putting that up right here and you it's Kim Pinella.com slash design recharge. And there you mm -hmm. are going to do a couple other giveaways. Yes. Little giveaways. So mm -hmm. if people um, from this people, so we did two that were from live, but if anybody's listening, um, sometime in the next month, I guess you'll pick some people from that, um, people who have subscribed from that 
kimpanella.com slash design recharge. So if you're watching this on YouTube, don't feel like, oh, I missed out on my chance. Just go ahead and subscribe. You never know, you might win. So then that's another way for people to kind of stay up on what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And I'll leave it open for about a month. Okay. Before I pick a winner, so. Okay. Well, maybe right. we can announce that, hijack. Um, we can announce yeah. that on, um, yes, and she did, uh, yeah, the little things on poopery, it was the, I was like, oh my gosh, did you do all that illustration? She's like, no, no, just the icons. But still, the icons are terrific. I wish that I had done all of that illustration work. That would have been so cool. For sure. But still, mm -hmm. that's a big company. Anyway, guys, this is the last design recharge for the year. And I'm excited to have spent another year with y'all. And I will do, um, we're starting right back January 3rd, I think is the first Wednesday. And I have one of my old students, and I think it's the first student besides Suzanne, so um, that I've had on my show that was one of my students. So I'm really excited for you guys to meet Nick Brito. It sounds like I'm saying burrito, but it's not. It's B-R-I-T-O, but he says it like burrito. So anyway, I'm excited to have him on. And I'm just, I hope you guys have a happy holiday and um, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and whatever you celebrate, Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or I don't know what else. But um, <laughs> I just hope you have a great one. And Kim, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. Bye, y'all.